at 213, responding to storage facility fire, 298 McClellan. Where's the manager? Right here. We gotta make sure these lockers don't contain anything combustible. I need them open. Give me that. What is this, an antiques warehouse? With this power off, somebody's meat's gonna go bad. Uh, sir? Guaranteed way of dealing with stress. I don't think I'm gonna make it all the way home. Come on, I know you're working hard, but it can't be that bad. It's easy for you to say. Management's killing me. Your management? What are you talking about? Toby, we got 100 patients coming through every single day, and I'm the one that has to make sure it doesn't go off the rails. Can we please stop? You gotta chill, Oz. There's a job you signed up for. You're not EMS anymore. You don't understand, okay? Those patients are being brought in by our people. If one of them screws up, I'm the one that has to act. I gotta take them to Ryder. Maybe I gotta get them fired. The responsibility is crushing me. You got the shoulders for I'm high. You got the runners high? I got the runner I wanna throw up. All right, go. Now you gotta cross that edge, you know? I crossed it hours ago. Ah. Oh. get used to this. It's all part of my plan to distract you from those murderers and spies and tax evaders and get you addicted to pleasure and keep you for myself. You do realize I don't actually catch tax evaders, right? You don't. You know what I mean. I don't think I do. I think you need to maybe try again. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, what, what is it that I actually do? <laughs> You know, we gotta enjoy this while we can. Who knows how long it'll be until we have a little rug rat jumping on the bed just when we wanna have some quality time. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. I just thought you and I should have a kid someday, no? Are you serious? You're serious right now, aren't you? Yeah. No? I don't know. I mean, I've I never... Us? Parents? Happens all the time, Mish. Why not for us? Is that you or me? It's you. <laughs> Ten bucks says it's Klein. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm on my way in. to a direct request from CSIS. A John Doe was discovered in a storage unit, murdered apparently. It was rented under a false ID and paid for a year in advance in cash. What does that have to do with us? Well, the unit was full of stolen goods, including this laptop, which belongs to the CEO of Optican Informatics, Lorraine Browning. Well, since when do we deal with stolen laptops? Browning's company is one of the fastest growing defense contractors on the continent. She's got four open contracts with the Department of National Defense. We believe that that laptop contains secrets that are vital to national security. But we have the computer right here. Right, so what I didn't tell you is that in her robbery report, she never declared it missing. Now, CSIS and the DND want to know why. So far, our investigations have revealed that none of the intelligence is compromised, but we're going to have Dev do a more detailed investigation. So you think this murder has something to do with it? Well, until we can prove it doesn't, let's assume that it does, OK? Dev, present for you. Ooh. Anything on the contents of that storage unit? Our people are fingerprinting the stolen goods. Hopefully, they can ID the thief. What about the victim? We're still waiting on autopsy results, but with no visible signs of violence, I'm thinking that maybe he was reaching in for a cherry freeze pop and just sort of fell in. 
Uh, okay, we need to find out who had access to that computer and what they might have got from it. As for you two... We find out why Browning hid the fact that she lost sensitive government tech and did not report it. That's just what I was going to say. Well, that's just what we'll do. You and your wife have a lovely home, Mr. Van Zandt. Thank you. You can call me Tom. My wife is expecting you. Lorraine? Miss Browning, I'm Sergeant McCluskey. This is Special Consultant Logan. Hello. Oh, when we had the break-in, one officer came and asked us five questions, and we never heard from him again. You find my laptop, and suddenly we have two detectives? There was also a dead body found at the scene. Lucky we weren't home when we were robbed. We don't know who the victim is or why he was killed. We're hoping that you can help us with this. Why would we know? Can we speak with you privately? My husband and executive assistant can hear anything. I'm sorry, you are? And Charlie Satie. I've been with Ms. Browning for the last six years. The government is concerned that information from your laptop may have been compromised. The device is encrypted with military-grade cryptographic security. It's unlikely someone who's stealing silverware could break into it. Do you know this man? I've never seen him. Who is he? He's a victim. He was found in a freezer in the thief's locker. You're saying the thief is also a murderer. Why didn't you report the theft? My computer's a brick without the passwords. I had a new device the next day. I need to get it back. What else of my things were you able to recover? So far, just the laptop. I thought you were bringing it back. As soon as forensics is through with it, yes. It doesn't seem like it's that important to you, though. I had family photos I didn't pack up. I'd like to have them. Is there anything on the computer that has to do with Optican Informatics' work for the federal government? All classified information is on an internal network. It can't be accessed without my passwords. Well, is it possible the information could be transferred to an SD card? You're saying you found a data card? No. Was there a card in the computer at the time of the theft? No. I just don't understand your line of questioning. You'll have to excuse Ms. Browning. She needs to leave for a business meeting in five minutes. Thank you. She doesn't know the dead guy. Mostly she's upset about the laptop. Why did you ask about the SD card? Well, when you asked her about sensitive information, I saw her put an SD card into a laptop. It's all spreadsheets, figures. I couldn't figure it out. So Lorraine Browning is lying. Yeah. I need to figure out why. <laughs> did we get anything from Browning's laptop? Uh, emails, corporate PR, uh, accounting details. Absolutely nothing for anyone to be killed over, though. But. She was right. The security was top-notch. I mean, I had to use a high-level brute force cracking algorithm just to get into it. So the thief didn't get in? No. But someone should have tried pretty hard. But then she was also worried about an SD card. Yeah, yeah. When I was checking the buffers, I noticed that one had been inserted into the laptop, but its contents weren't saved to the hard drive, so whatever's on it is still a mystery. And something she was concerned about. What is she hiding? Dev, can you find out more about the projects Browning's company is working on for the DND? I mean, whatever is on that card has to be incredibly important. Right. So our man in the freezer, he was wearing glasses. They were uh, Trapani frames. Only four stores in the city carry them. I sent his prescription out a little while ago. It looks like I got a hit. Meet Nick Marcus. Yo, that's our boy. He's married. So what, his wife didn't put out a missing persons report? Maybe she's not missing him. King? Yeah? IIB. What's going on? We need to speak with you privately. It's about your husband. Paula, if you need me to stay. Um, I'll be okay, Mike. Call me. Can we speak with you inside? Uh, yep. Yeah. We're sorry to have to bring you this news. Your husband was murdered. His body was found early this morning. Where? In Mexico? Here, in a storage locker. Oh my god. When was the last time you saw him? S six months ago. He went out to work and I got a text. Goodbye. It's over, keep the house. That was it. I never saw him again. All this time, I thought he left me. You thought that he was in Mexico? He talked a lot about packing it in and going down in Baja. And the Mohawk police found his car parked on the Aquasasin Reserve the next day. I just figured he was on his way south. 
He'd been dissident in the last couple of years. Some nights he wouldn't come home, wouldn't say where he was. I got the text and just figured he'd moved on. I moved on, too. Well, it's possible he never sent the text. Whoever killed him might have sent it to cover it up. Do you know who killed him? No. We believe the killer may have committed a series of home thefts. Possibly someone Nick knew or was in contact with. Do you have any enemies? He hardly had any real friends. He worked all the time. You could ask his boss at the mortgage company, but he didn't know anything when I called him. What's his boss's name? Roger London. London Mortgage Group. What the hell was he up to? Even after he's dead, he's keeping secrets. Who was the man outside? Mike. Mike Sexton. Did Nick and Mike know each other? No. We met a month after Nick left, walking my dog in the park, and we just started talking. He's a good guy. Actually talks to me, nothing like Nick. Well, we're sorry to have brought you the news. If you can think of anything else, please give us a call. So maybe Marcuson was having an affair. Right. He's at his girlfriend's house when it gets robbed. He confronts the thief, loses the battle, ends up getting stuffed into a locker with all the merchandise. Cheating husband winds up dead. You know who's usually responsible, right? You know, I read Paula when she found out he was dead. I mean, she seemed genuine. And I, as far as I can see, she's telling the truth. Well, she certainly got over him fast. I mean, what, she started seeing him a, a month after Nick disappeared? So how long does someone have to wait when they've been abandoned? And besides, you think that she could actually kill him and physically stuff him into the locker? I don't know. Clark. So, Paula King was seeing a guy named Mike Sexton. I need you to run down his particulars. Oh, with all my free time, right? Dev. Okay, okay. Uh, there's something that you need to know. I compared Nick Marcuson's driver's license signature with the application to rent the storage locker. And they match. You're saying that Nick rented the locker? Yeah. And his fingerprints were all over the stolen goods inside of him. So he's not only our victim, he's our thief. steals a locker full of valuables. Over a 12-month period until his disappearance in June of this year. And then he winds up dead and stuffed into a freezer. So why does somebody kill Nick but not take any of the valuables? My gut is telling me that it has something to do with that SD card. I've been looking for a connection to security-sensitive projects that Lorraine's company has been working on. Two of them are military telecom systems, another one is a robotics weapons control system, and another two missile guidance systems. I'm still checking to see if any of this stuff has been spotted out in the wild. Okay, what about the storage place? Is there anything from the surveillance footage? No, it's a dead end. The security cameras are erased every 10 days. However, what we do know is that somebody had the codes to get in and out of that locker. Meaning the killer must have known Nick. Well, Paula mentioned that Nick hung out with his boss. What do we have on Nick's boss? Uh. Roger London. He was charged with battery about three years ago. He had to do a year of anger management classes. See, maybe he knew about Nick's side business. Maybe he was a part of it. Maybe Roger's anger management problems got the best of Nick. Do we have an address? We specialize in second mortgages on high-end properties. People who like to spend a bit more than their six-figure paychecks? Yeah, something like that. And what exactly did Nick do here? Well, he was our property evaluator. Before I give out a cent, I need to know that I'll be able to get it back eventually. Did any clients have any problems with him? This business isn't about making friends. Everybody thinks that their homes are worth more than we value them at, and we wind up foreclosing on some of them, but uh, business is business, right? Yeah, was he good at what he did? Well, he knew what stuff was worth. Never gave me a bad evaluation. Now, if you're asking if he was the hardest worker ever, well, that's another question. Once he was out on the road doing evals, and he disappeared for half a day. Sometimes he never showed up at all. When was the last time he showed up for work? Well, he disappeared when I was on vacation in Hawaii. I came back and found him gone. He just left everything in his office and vanished. Did you wonder where he went? He left me with over three weeks' worth of assessments to get covered. I didn't have too much time to worry about it. Well, you don't seem to care that one of your employees was murdered. He just worked here. He kept his private life private, like a ghost, you know? It's hard to feel too much for him. Did Nick have anything that could suggest he was living beyond his means? Maybe another source of income? Look, the guy just worked here. I never noticed anything. Thank you for your time. In touch. It's a nice watch. Rolex, huh? Rolex.
Roger London lied to us. The Rolex he was wearing, he stole from Nick Markison. So London could be our killer. And Markison's partner? Think about it, you know, we're property evaluators. That's great cover for a couple of thieves. Markison scopes out the houses and then brings the information to London. They recon it, they rob the place, and they put the goods into a storage locker. But London doesn't want to share. I mean, that sounds like motive. He takes the car, he drops it off at the reserve, he hops a flight to Hawaii, and then he sends a text to the wife for an alibi. I'll have Dev look into them. Hey guys, interesting news. I've checked into all of Marcuson's robberies and they were all within a block and a half of his property assessment. That is interesting. So maybe the job was just a front for him to scope out targets to rob. Seems like. Okay, I need Metro's itemized list of all of the stolen goods that are still missing. So if any of those items show up, maybe that'll give us a glimpse into Nick's secret life. I'll make up uh, an alert to send out to pawn shops and antique dealers. I saw Roger London wearing a Rolex watch that I think he stole from Nick. All right, so you think that London killed Marcuson now? Well, he's definitely a suspect, along with Lorraine Browning and her husband. Okay, her maybe, but the husband is a world-class surgeon. He funds hospitals in Haiti. In fact, he was there at the time of Marcuson's disappearance. Well, the thing we know is that Lorraine Browning is missing the SD card that was stolen with her computer. And whatever is on that SD card, she is desperate to get it back. Okay, well, for what it's worth, the autopsy results came in. Okay, Marcuson's death may have not been planned. What? The victim fell or was hit in the left temple, and the shape and the placement of the bruising, they match a chest that was found in the locker. So he could have been in a scuffle, or he could have just slipped and fell and hit his head. Yeah, it ruptured his middle meningeal artery. And then blood pushes against the dura mater, and he dies of an epidural hematoma. It doesn't take much. See? So it could have been an accident. I will look into yeah, it. Even if it was an accident, someone still hit the body. Okay, you read that Marcuson has stuff hidden all over his office, right? Maybe he did the same thing at home. From what I read, but I don't think his wife knew about it. Well, he wasn't big on sharing. I think it's worth it to do a once-over at her house. Which means, Dev, we're gonna need a search warrant. Oz, hey. Hey, Toby, what's up? Look, we had a death from an epidural hematoma. Can you give me Dr. Sonda's number? Oh, yeah, sure, I can get that for you. Hey, uh, let me get you the number. I'll call you back, okay? Right, hey, what gives? You dropped off your patient an hour ago. You're supposed to be back on the road. Uh, just need a little downtime. It's all good. It's all good? Mm -hmm. Is that what you want me to tell the people waiting for a pickup? <laughs> you know, I've already had a complaint about you this week. I don't want to have to talk to your supervisor. Oh, come on, you got my back right, Ozzy? First of all, don't call me Ozzy. And second, uh, we'll talk later. Okay, buddy? Oz, seriously, are you just going to let him get away with that? Hospital has to know you're in charge. Yeah, but... You know, we're friends, too. I'm his boss. It's weird. Okay, but your job is on the line. If you don't start acting like the boss, people are going to start taking advantage of you. So what do you want me to do? Just toughen up. Yeah? Take charge. Put on your big boy pants. Hmm? Big boy pants? Big boy pants. All right. Okay. Put on my big boy pants. Okay. I like the sound of that. Big boy pants. The upstairs bathroom's clear. Why are you people pulling my house apart? Is there anything more you can tell us about Nick in the days leading up to his disappearance? Any unusual behavior? He was in a good mood. That's why it hurt so much when he left. I thought he'd been happy thinking about leaving me. Now, I don't know what to think. Did he have a safe deposit box? Not that I know about. What about any other property? I don't know. Look, I told you. It's like he had this whole other life. What happened to his car? Sold it? Look, I have told you everything I know. What else do you want from me? We think that Nick was responsible for the thefts. Oh, my God. Where are you going? Where did that money come from? Don't worry about it, Paula. I've got things out of control. Paula. I came as soon as I could. I can't believe this is happening. They're saying Nick was a thief. Don't you think she's been through enough already? Hey, been through the entire house. Haven't found anything on the list. Okay. What, what list? What are you looking for? We believe one of the things he stole was a yellow and red SD card potentially containing sensitive government documents. I might have seen it. The day before he left, I didn't know what it was. I have it. This is gonna cost you. Where is it? I only saw him with it once. He was he was talking to someone on the phone asking for money. Well, think. You, you may have seen it again. I didn't. I don't know what he was doing. I don't want to know. Why is this happening? Remember in my read of Lorraine Browning, she wanted the SD card back? Yeah. Well, Paula saw Nick offering the SD card to someone. So Nick extorted money from Lorraine Browning? Potentially. I mean, it's the best theory we've got so far. Mr. 
Browning, you were in Ottawa on June 12th last year? Two days of supplier meetings. Why? Did the names Nick Markison or Roger London ring a bell? No. Markison is the man we found in a freezer. We believe he stole your laptop and the SD card that was in it. This is the second time you've asked me about an SD card. I don't know what you're after. I just want it back. You're being blackmailed, aren't you? Where's this coming from? Look, we believe that sensitive information came into Markison's hands and he was trying to extort money for its return. How could you do this to me? Can't find out about Pack 4. This is absurd. I don't have time for your espionage stories, and I don't have time to be hauled in here at your every whim. If you'd like to talk to me again, please contact my attorneys. She's lying. She's being blackmailed. Which could mean that she had motive to kill Nick. Yeah. Browning lied about her knowledge of the SD card and whatever information it contained. Yeah, I got a confusing read off of her. She was accusing someone of doing something to her, and there was something about Pack 4. That could help us see what was on the card, maybe. I'll run that against Optican's projects. Blackmail makes sense. If a missing card proves that she compromised the D&D, that would ruin her company. Maybe she killed Markson to silence him. Well, if she killed him, why is the card still missing? Okay, well, you're a read of the widow, Paula. She overheard Nick on the phone demanding money for the return of something that he stole. So the wife killed Nick in order to take over the blackmail herself? She's still a suspect, but our search didn't turn up the SD card. Excuse me. Yeah. You remember how Toby said that Nick was a hider, right? So we went to the storage locker, we looked at all the items. We even looked inside the items to see if we could find it. Maybe he hid it. We didn't find anything. However, Metro sent me a list. And on this list were all the items from the robberies. Now, these are the items that were registered to insurance companies that didn't show up in the storage locker. Now, wait for it. Wait for it. Does that look familiar? Yes, that is the Rolex that Roger London stole from Nick. Have Metro pick up London. I'm way ahead of you. They're already walking into interrogation as we speak. Familiar? Never seen it before. No. Possession of stolen property. We can start there. I found the watch. I had no idea it was stolen. Yeah, you found the watch in Nick Markison's office. And when we asked you if you knew anything about stolen goods you might add, you said no. He disappeared and left me doing double duty for weeks, okay? I figured he owed me a watch. You want the watch back? Take it. Did your relationship with Nick extend outside of the office? No. I told you, he kept to himself. What am I being accused of here? Whoever killed Nick partnered with him on the stolen goods. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't kill anybody. You have an assault charge on your record. Maybe you and Nick fought. Maybe your temper got the best of you. No. When was the last time you saw him? I don't know. In the office, he was going out for an evaluation. Nick and I weren't friends. I'm sure as hell weren't partners. So if someone killed him, it had nothing to do with me. Mr. London has made bail on the possession charge. Finally. Well? When I asked London when he last saw Nick, he thought about the office. Meaning that he probably wasn't in the storage unit when Markson died. Thought maybe London found Nick dead and, and put him in the freezer. Doesn't mean that he didn't know about the card, though. But if he knew about the card, why did the blackmail stop? And if Lorraine Browning denies blackmail and she doesn't know Markerson, how do we prove that London was involved? Maybe we don't need Browning to talk if we get to the person who knows the most about her. Her husband. Her assistant. I was going to say that. Hey, Martha. Hey. I'm sorry. This is going in your performance review. Dude, I was just resting. Oh, you were just resting? Yes. Well, in that case, I wouldn't want to disturb you while you're resting. Are you kidding me? 
This is your job. Start taking it seriously. I do take it seriously. I'm gonna have to file a report. Oz. Man, it's crazy, Paula King. Her world falls apart. And she's married to this guy for years, doesn't know who he really is. It's, it's insane. Well, most relationships end up in disappointment one way or another. So I, I didn't drink the Optimist coffee this morning like you did. <laughs> I'm actually more of a realist. Realist? Yes. So, okay, when it comes to relationships, your glass is half empty. Half empty, half full? I don't know, the glass usually ends up shattered anyways. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so when I get married, I'm not inviting you to make a speech. No? No. Well, that's okay. I would probably just be hanging out at the bar. That's anyway. what probably I will be. <laughs> oh, listening to everyone speak. Anyway. How's everything with you and Adam? Are you? No, 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 no. no I'm just, you know, I'm, I can tell. We've been working together for a few years. Someone's up. You know, you're lucky being able to read people. I wish I knew what was going on in people's minds. It would make life so much easier. Yeah, you would think, but it's kind of like the opposite of making life easier. I couldn't even read my girlfriend if I wanted to. Yeah, but there must be some reason for that. Maybe she's an alien. She's definitely not an alien. I checked. She's got the human parts. <laughs> Adam said something to me this morning, and I just, I wasn't sure if he was joking. It's nothing. Doesn't sound like nothing. He said that he wanted to have a baby. Awesome. That's great. What? Isn't no, I, Come on. I don't know. I mean, I've never even thought about having a kid in this job with with the hours and then the risk. Is it that or is it Adam? No, everything is fine with Adam. Adam is great. I, I trust Adam. I just, I just don't know if I'm ready. I can't stop thinking about this SD card. Why did it disappear when Marcuson died? And more importantly, where is it now? We know that your boss was being blackmailed. She said you asked about it. She also said she told you she wasn't. What we're asking you now. Do you know of anyone threatening her? Miss Browning's answer is my answer. You get what you want. Tell me where and when. It started again. She was in Ottawa the night the thief was murdered. Where were you that evening? I was with her. You can check the travel memo. They can't prove I drove back that night. You'd do anything to protect her, wouldn't you, Mr. Sati? I'm loyal, if that's what you're asking. I mean more than loyal. I mean you would do anything to protect her if she was threatened. I didn't kill anybody. If you don't mind, I'm very busy. You can let yourselves out the way you came in. Yeah, hello. He was in Toronto the night Nick was killed. Why kill your blackmailer when you can have your assistant do it for you? There's another thing. Lorraine got a call. I think the blackmail started again. Hey. Hey. When I saw Lorraine's blackmail phone call, yesterday's newspaper was on the desk. So if Nick the blackmailer is dead, who's calling Lorraine now? I don't know. His, his partner? Who's that? Is that Roger London? Maybe. You know what? I might be able to help with some info from that call. See, I pulled up her home phone records. 
Yeah? Most of the incoming calls came from her office and her husband, but one, one was from an unidentified number. Now, the bad news is that it was a burner and it was shut off right after the call, but the good news is if it comes back on, I can definitely get a location. That's great. Well, it's probably already in the trash. Last night, two houses were broken into, fancy addresses. In one, nothing was taken. In the other, 19th century silver candlesticks and 18th century French mantle clock were smashed. Metro ID'd them from the report that Dev made of the missing antiques. Somebody's looking for something. Where well, they found it. The mysterious SD card? Maybe not so mysterious. So you remember Toby talking about he heard Pack 4 Now, it turns out that one of the projects that Lorraine was working on for the DND was codenamed PAC-4, Pack 4 It's a fully automated, state-of-the-art weapons guidance system. We're talking KA-band active radar-seeking technology. This is a revolutionary improvement on target tracking and discrimination. Why are you guys not as excited about this as okay? Okay, this could be what Browning was trying to sell. Yeah, or already sold. Okay, rumor has it that the Chinese are bringing a similar product to market very soon. And my inside sources say that it has to be based on the Optican technology. Well, it sounds like a reason for blackmail and murder to me. There was a witness at the break-in last night. It all happened so fast. I heard the crash, and I thought my cat had gotten onto the China cabinet again. We know that you've already spoken with the police, but if there's anything more you could tell us about the intruder. Anybody tries that on me again, they're gonna get the business end of my knitting needle. If you could give us a description. He was big. Did you have your glasses on at the time? No, I tried to put them on, but he hit me so fast. Do you remember where you bought the clock and the candlesticks? There's a lovely shop in Yorkville that I go to. Ben O'Fine Antiques. <laughs> Man, oh, man. I could murder some Mongolian barbecue right about now, huh? Rick? Jimmy, you're in? OK, what's going on here? What's with the cold shoulder? What do you think? Oh, what are you, in high school? I'm just doing my job, OK? And if you were doing your job, we wouldn't be in this situation. Hey, Toby. Hey. hey. You, you got a second? Yeah. Oh, wait, it'll just take a minute. OK, yeah. OK. Nothing I'm doing is working. What is the problem? You remember Perry? Yeah. Yeah, well, I caught him sleeping at work yesterday. I tried to crack the whip, and now the whole staff is turning on me. I don't know what else to do. OK, uh, have you asked him what the problem is? No. He's always been a good paramedic, right? Yeah. I'm sure there's a reason. OK, man? OK. Oh, well, it's good. Nice. Good to see you. Well, hey. hey, Perry, hang on. Hang on a second. So what's the problem? Obviously, there's something going on with you. Just talk to me. And maybe we can sort it out. Not going to be able to solve this one. Try me. Jane lost her job. She was working for this company. It went bust. She's self-employed, so there's no unemployment. Jeez, I had, I had no idea. I've been working six hours a day at a bakery to make it up. Why didn't you tell me? I, mean, I, I didn't even know you baked. You bake? I'll do whatever it takes. We got a mortgage. And now it's not going to get paid. What? Perry, that's... Hello? Hello? Welcome. Hey, let me guess. Newlyweds looking for some fine pieces for your new home. Mm -hmm. We're not together. We should be. Oh, you make a lovely couple. You sold these items to Adele Torday. You must be mistaken. This receipt says differently. You're selling goods stolen by Nick Markison. This is an elite establishment. I don't deal in stolen goods and... I don't know any Markison. Then who did you buy them from? It's one of the stolen items over there. We know he was here looking for something. Whoever stole those has already killed one, so you're looking at becoming an accessory to murder. OK. His name is Mark Douglas. He's the one who sold me the goods. He works with another guy who's a thief. Mark came here last night. He wanted to know if I had anything left. It was just a few pieces, but he, he tore them apart looking for something. And did he find what he was looking for? No. And then he wanted to know the addresses of where the rest of the things had ended up. Who's Mark Douglas?
Nick's partner in crime was Mark Douglas. We know him as Mike Sexton. Yeah, he stole the Mike Sexton ID. That's why he came up clean when I first checked him out. And you like him for the murder? Yeah. yeah we think that he found the SD card, got the idea for the extortion of Lorraine Browning. He was going to cut Douglas out of it. And now he's moving in on the widow of the man he killed. It's dark. He got close to her to find out where Nick was hiding it. It's been six months. He's developed actual feelings for her. He calls the search off. And when you came around and started asking questions about the SD card, he started looking again. It's a dangerous game. Now he's probably going to try to find the money and run. I'm still trying to run down his location. In the meantime, stick with the wife. If Douglas did it for her for some sick reason, he might go back there. OK, we'll head to the house. Deb, put a tracker on her cell. Call us if she makes a move. Look, I found out about the people who killed Nick. Whatever he had, they think that we've got it, and they're threatening to kill us. We should call the police. No, we can't trust them. We can't trust anybody. Paula, please. I love you. I don't want to see you get hurt. Yeah. Michelle, Metro check Mark Douglas's apartment. It was a dead end, but Paula's cell phone is on the move. Hey, they could be together. Where is she now? Uh, moving on to Queen's Key. Hold, hold it. It's pulling into the parking structure across from the terminal. We're close. Have some units meet us there. Still think Paula's innocent? Who are you? They told us the blackmailer was dead. So it was you who killed him. Show it to me. Open it. of Nick uh, Markison. I didn't kill him. We were supposed to be partners. I just wanted my share. There was a struggle. He fell. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. So you romanced his wife? He just met her to find whatever it was he was hiding. But then I got to know her. He was going to leave her anyway. <laughs> Paula, it's not what you think. I didn't mean to hurt her. Please tell her. Watch your head. Douglas confessed he was the one selling the stolen goods. Yeah, they argued over Nick's big score. Nick fell, hit his head. Douglas gave us everything, including the blackmail. Excuse me. Why am I still being held? May I have my card and money? I'd like to be out of here. You're not going anywhere, Miss Browning. We know what was on that card. And it implicates you in the illegal sales of special ops intel. Why would I sell out my company's reputation for a few dollars? <sighs> what did you do? I'll handle it. Lorraine! You did this not because it would damage you or your company. You did this because the two of you were lovers. You didn't want him to go to prison. She used your computer. She saw what was on the SD card. I told you. My associate and I are done with your insinuations. My lawyer will be here any moment. Lorraine, I have the card. I don't want you to be hurt by this anymore. She didn't know anything about it. It sounded so easy. Just transfer a few files and I'd be set. When they took her computer and started the call, she just tried to help. I screwed everything up. I'm so sorry. Say another word. Why don't you make yourselves comfortable while you wait for your representation? The Crown Prosecutor's Office is going to be working overtime. See, I told you we'd take care of this client, right? Hey, I didn't hear you come in. You hungry? No, I am way too tired to eat. Huh? Does that mean you need help getting undressed? <laughs> Maybe a little. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen. I, I was thinking about what you said. And, um, before we have a kid, before 
We even talk about having a kid. We need to talk about us. About you. <laughs> That's fair. Baby steps, right? Baby steps. So it was the assistant the whole time. And, and they were having an affair? Having an affair. Yeah. Didn't even see it. Sounds like quite the case. You look good, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Everything OK? Yeah, well, I talked to Perry. Yeah? Turns out he's been working two jobs because his wife got laid off and they can't make their mortgage. That's rough. Yeah. What can you do? I'll tell you what I did. I put the word out, and now 20 EMS are chipping in 100 bucks each to pay that mortgage. And next month, I'm putting them first priority for overtime. Nice. You know, I tried it your way. I tried it Sandy's way. In the end, I got to do it my way. You know, I almost don't recognize you. You got this uh, management style, like a swagger about you. All right, let's talk you more, Jockey. Come on. All right, I'll give you a three-second head start. Oh, I'm already tired. I'm already tired. Oh. oh. <laughs>